you were at the NSP rally uh, last night, yeah. um, you would know, of course, Jeanette Chong and uh, Go Ming Sing launched, uh, how should I put it, uh, kind of like a personal attack against you and mm. they specifically cited you as an example mm. of uh, someone who has uh, benefited from the GRC system mm. despite yeah. uh, not you know, having proven yourself in terms of a good track record. I think they specifically mentioned a few examples when you were chairman of the National Population Committee 205, fertility rate dropped to 1.24%, uh, and then you advocated, you as in, you know, personally advocated foreigners to come in, and as a result of that, a third of our population today mm. is made up of foreigners. And of course, Maslamat, they mentioned it again, and they asked, you know, why didn't the PAP, uh, I think in their words, kick Mr. Wong Kan Sing out? Mm. What is your response? Okay. Is it something that you let me Let me take it uh, in, uh, in uh, several uh, stretches, uh, several points. Mm -hmm. And then if I, maybe I just make short comments on each of them. Okay. And then uh, if I've not uh, dealt with or answered the question, you come back to me and ask me again sure. afterwards. Uh. Sure. Uh, firstly, my track record is very clear. I've been the minister for different ministries for many years. Started with community development, foreign affairs, and then home affairs. And in all these ministries, I believe that the PM must have believed, must have thought that I've done my job. And that is why he continued to have confidence in me and fielded me. But the real test is not just the Prime Minister's decision. The real test is that of the voters. So in 1984, I contested the election. In 88, I led a GRC in Tapayo. No opposition came. In 1991, I led the GRC team in Thompson GRC, the old Thompson GRC. In 1997, I led the PAP team in the GRC for Pishan Topayo. Now, the fact that no opposition come here to contest in every of the elections that I've contested cannot be my doing. They have really relegated that duty. They have not worked at all or worked hard enough to get people and that's why they were unable to contest in many places. So that alone speaks of the strength or weakness of the opposition party. I can't remember when NSP was set up and uh, even when they were contesting in constituencies, I don't think, uh, in fact I know for a fact that no NSP candidates were elected into parliament, except for Steve Chia who came in as an NCMP. Now that, that's an issue about uh, why I just have uh, benefited from the GRC system and came into parliament. I think that clearly that cannot be my fault. It must squarely, that problem must squarely be placed on the shoulders of those opposition parties who are able to feel or find anyone to contest in the GLCs. In this round, almost all the constituencies were contested, except for Tanjung Paga. Even for Tanjung Paga, it was not the ones of a team, except that they did not get the paperwork right and on time. So clearly, they can find people they would have contested. So the fact shows that in all these elections, they were not able to get the act together. So that's a simple point. Now, on uh, population and TFR, what proposal does the NSP have in improving our TFR? Low TFR in Asia is very common, whether it's in Taiwan, South Korea, uh, not to talk about the one-China policy of uh, China, or even in Hong Kong, which is uh, just like us. Their TFRs are just about one. And that is the nature and the trend of society, that as people uh, get better educated, as societies get better developed, uh, individuals have choices as to whether to get married. We will do as much as we can to encourage young people to get married. We will also do as much as we can to support them with assistance such as the baby bonus, childcare subsidies, etc. The government is spending 
1.6 billion dollars, 1,600 billion dollars in supporting young families, and that is quite a lot of money. The issue is where else can we spend more money that can help encourage Singaporeans to have babies? That is very much influenced by the personal choices of married couples. The government can only encourage, exhort and uh, try to help them with assistance where we can so that they can have more children. That's quite clearly the case. On, uh, in fact, that is the reason why uh, we have to find a way to supplement the local manpower, Singaporean manpower getting into the workforce. With our economy growing at a very good rate in the years that we do not have a problem, uh, the demand for workers was quite high. What do you do when there, there was growth? Well, you either don't grow and you tell the companies, sorry, uh, there aren't enough people for you to employ and therefore you just got to decide to stay in your current business or not at all. And if they were to decide to stay in the current business, then we will not be able to take advantage of the growth opportunities that present to us, that presented to us in uh, Asia, like in China and India, and also in the other developed countries uh, like Europe and the US, when they were doing well before the financial crisis. If they decide that, well, since there were no workers and I really want to continue with my business, and they move out of Singapore, really the ones who will lose out will be Singaporeans. So that is the issue which the government has to face. To allow foreign workers to come in, to help do the jobs and fill up the vacancies which employers have demand for. Or not to allow them and in which it means that Singaporeans will lose their job. It's a very serious question. It's not just a throwaway line at a rally and shoot it off like that. If you have a serious proposal on how to solve this problem, we will be very happy to hear that. But don't just shoot off without thinking. The issue is much more complex than they think. And our voters may get confused because sometimes these uh, uh, pot shots uh, may influence people into thinking that, yeah, but on further thought, further analysis, actually, that kind of uh, uh, remarks are quite baseless in that they're not supported by any analysis and they don't have any idea as to how to help improve our economy, help our economy grow and make up for the lack of a local population. So in, in terms of you know what you mentioned about having children and at the end of the day it's a personal choice that couples make but then they will do, you know, turn around and tell you that the reason we, can't, we don't have enough children is because you know, the cost of living you know, we can't afford to have that many kids because it's too expensive, schooling, tuition, yes. I, mean, I mean, the list goes on. So no, certainly, certainly. I think every family will have uh, different needs, different wishes and different expectations. The government will look at it uh, from individual basis as well as from the national perspective. Now, to say that we are able to help every family to fulfill all their personal wishes I think uh, if you look back and scan around, uh, no government can fulfill everyone's expectation or to meet their needs or demand. I think that is an issue which people can think about. But as far as supporting them in an environment where they can uh, work, where they can uh, do business, where they can uh, earn a good wage, government has provided a lot of these in the form of infrastructure, in the form of education, in the form of attracting companies and investments to come here so that they can create jobs for Singaporeans. I think that is the basis in which we grow our economy. To say that no, we don't want or we don't need so many and that there are too many of them uh, without considering the effects of it on Singaporeans will be a bit shallow. So you think it's unfair and almost irresponsible of the NSP to almost hold you personally responsible for the low fertility? Well, firstly, rate? I am not accountable to the NSP. Mm -hmm. I think that be clear about that. I'm not accountable to any party, right? I'm accountable, firstly, to the Prime Minister 
on whether I am doing my job or not. And if he thinks so, and if he has confidence in me, he thinks I can continue to serve, then he will field me. But the ultimate decision as to whether I'm accountable for the things I do or not depends on my voters here in Bishan Payo and depends on Singaporeans. I think that is the issue. In my years as the Home Affairs Minister, 17 years, uh, not a short time, not a very long time, but I can proudly say that as far as the safety of Singapore is concerned, as far as the confidence of the people as well as the foreigners who come here, they feel that Singapore is very safe, they feel that we are on top of the situation and we were able to deal with crime, drugs and terrorism. And if you look at the issue of terrorism, I think that is how the subject of Masalamat came out. Our ministry was the first to discover the Jama Islamia. We were the first. And we acted quickly. We notified our neighbours like Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines and Australia, telling them about a network that were present in their country. And over time, we continue to investigate the Jama'a Islamia. And as far as the Singapore network is concerned, we don't see them operating anymore. There could be sympathizers, there could be people who uh, may try the luck or uh, attempt to come in and may be very determined to do so from elsewhere. And if they can get uh, help from other people, uh, from other so sources, other countries, and they may succeed one day. But as you know, the ministry as well as the government has put in place many measures. Ultimately, the public role is very important. The vigilance of the public in uh, looking out for suspicious people and items really a role in alerting the security agencies to the kind of problems that we may face. Look at examples of uh, New York, look at examples of Haymarket in uh, London, you can see that public vigilance play an important role to avert a bomb explosion. So in the case of Singapore, it's the same thing. And therefore, we will spare no effort in making sure to, that Singapore will remain safe. But again, let me say this. Terrorism today is still very much alive in the region. And if you follow uh, the events in Indonesia, there were some very recent scary uh, plots. And if they had exploded and succeeded and exploded the bombs, I think the consequences would be quite significant in that many innocent lives would be lost. And uh, also, they will be more bold and bolden, and they will try to do uh, many more uh, such bombing. So let us be clear. Let us have a clear eye view of the reality of Singapore and our region. Only then can we uh, take measures, only then can we live our life normally. Because firstly, we should not live in the shroud of fear of terrorism. Life must go on, right? We must continue to make a living, look after our family. But at the same time, we must have our eyes and ears open to watch out for any uneventuality. Then Singaporeans can be better prepared to cope with any of these uh, terrorist attacks on us. So it would be a bit uh, myopic or short-sighted to look at uh, one case and even for that case we investigated fully and uh, they, we appointed a COI and uh, they thoroughly examined the circumstances and they came up with 10 recommendations which have been or are in the process of being implemented. This government is open. It always tells its people the kind of problem we face. And then when we have a problem, when the mistake was made, we will find out what was the mistake, what caused it, and how do we deal with the problem so that we do not repeat the same mistake. So that is the way we function, not by shooting off and then offering no solution. The least, the, the worst you want is to have a government uh, paralyzed by such concerns and not able to act. And we are not like that. Are you surprised though that the NSP has launched this attack against you, considering that they're not even contesting in your Bishan Tophayo ward? Well, well, Singapore is a free country. They can say what they want. But I hope that when they say anything, 
they say so when they think the October is due carefully and not just shoot off.